Let's consider some basic economic issues related to welfareism as a form of interventionism in the economy. First, remember that government can't produce anything. It can only redistribute, redirect, control, or constrain. And what that means is that it can only get its money from other people, those who are producing. Also remember this, that these kinds of interventions create the kind of errors in economic calculations that you might expect. As the government takes more and more money from those who are productive, it ends up controlling more and more of the whole of the economy, which gives us less information by which to make decisions. In fact, worse still, we end up taking money out of the realm of the productive, or money working to create more wealth, and it ends up becoming money that's consumed. Well, how much money are we talking about here? Well, consider this. From 1934, the year the Social Security Act was passed, until 2008, government spending, not private spending, government spending on pensions, welfare, and health care amounted to $45 trillion. That's a lot of money. This creates enormous, constantly increasing groups of people who are either partially or totally dependent, not on their own work, not on their own stewardship, not on their own calling, but they're dependent upon the state to provide for them. That's harmful for them and harmful for society. Government programs understand that are purportedly designed to help alleviate poverty actually end up creating more poverty. That's a basic economic principle. What you subsidize, you get more of. So let's look at some of the unintended consequences that come from some of these programs. Take a look at these charts that show us, for instance, first, the growth of the numbers of those on welfare since the radical increase in welfare programs with the Great Society in the 60s. We've got another chart that shows at the same time, and this hits even closer to home, that much less abstract, the growth of the number of unwed mothers and the breakdown of families on welfare. Finally, the third chart shows us the growth of the whole of the welfare class. Understand that this growth creates an ever-increasing load on those members of society who are producing. Now Christians are supposed to have a concern for the poor. And it might seem like what we're saying is pushing against that. But the reality is we're not. Do Christians have a concern for the poor? Isn't it right for us to help people no matter what the source is? See, that's the problem. God has called us to help people. But he's established those sources by which people will actually be helped. And the state's not one of them. We want to help people, which is why God calls individuals and calls the church to do this, and doesn't call the state to do it. But you might be wondering, now wait a minute, all these people, all this money we're spending at the state level to care for people, surely you're not saying the church can pick up that entire burden. We just don't have the resources for that. Well, that's right. We've gotten into this mess over a long period of time, and it's going to take a long period of time to get out of this mess. But do understand this, as we begin to push back against the welfare perspective, we're going to see those who are able suddenly entering into productivity, entering into freedom, entering into no longer being dependent.